Good evening, everybody. Kathy Arbor here. Welcome to my studio. And we're going to be doing this cute little fluffy owl today in acrylics. And this is part of my a painting a day. Um, that Lena, that's Miss Linux 2010, and I are doing. And uh, it's been, I'm not going to lie, a bit of a struggle to do it every single day. Uh, but it's also been a great way to improve uh, when you're working in one medium. You try new things, you um, work on, like I'm working on these um, little five by five canvas boards. And typically for just practicing, I was using just like file folder paper or mixed media paper, watercolor paper, that type of thing. Uh, so there is a bit of a difference when you're working on a canvas, and it's been um, a lot of help for me, actually. And I've tried all different types of subject matter, and that, too, has been uh, a lot of fun. So today, I know I have done a little owl in the past, how many, 48 days, I guess it is, for me. Uh, but that owl was sold already, so I don't have one. <laughs> so I, hey, Colleen, so we're going to do this little guy. This one's going to be, it looks difficult, but it's not going to be that bad. Um, here's the printout that you can get. And, oh, I already got water on it. <laughs> but it's very few colors in this one and it's going to be about brush um the way you handle your brush how much water you put on it you love owls yeah i do too <laughs> and you can decorate this guy up you could put like little jingle bells around his neck or a little holly on his head you know all kinds of stuff so this is uh Pretty well, all the colors we'll be needing. So, of course, titanium white, black. Um, and these are all pretty much Liquitex. So, this one is raw sienna. That's this one here. And this one is uh, burnt sienna. So, one's a little redder than the other. Then there's cadmium yellow medium. And this one is actually Van Dyke brown. Or if you have a raw umber, that'll do also. So you could um, paint this in this size, or you can do it larger. You can scale the, the reference uh, or the traceable to however big you want it. And I don't have... It's just a white background. So if you want it to have some kind of a background, you could do that first if you want. Um, I think I'm just going to paint the bird for now. I might put in uh, some... I'm going to lighten this. It looks a little dark for you guys. Maybe that's better. It's getting dark so... Oops, that's a little too much. It's getting dark so fast. Um, now it's like six o'clock and it's pitch black. <laughs> now, with doing these, you do have to use different size brushes. So these small canvases, I've had to um, dig out my smaller brushes that I typically wouldn't really use for the whole thing. But because it's uh, such a small canvas, I need smaller brushes. So today we're going to start off with, as you see in the, it's pretty much one color, but with some parts a little more uh, white added to it. So we have a fairly dark area in here. 
So we can go about this in different ways. So you could either do it feather by feather, or you could do the background in the dark color first, and then do your feathers on top of the black dark background, which is a little easier. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, you can also uh, tackle that around the outer edge of his eyes there. Uh, would be the same color basically and then we'll go in with a little bit of a lighter color. Now this color here in the center here um, it's probably a little bit more darker than the feathers are so I'm going to add a little bit of my uh, burnt sienna with a little bit of the van dyke brown which will give us this really warm brown that's down here so that's how i'm going to tackle this one right now and i've got a assortment of uh brushes here so let's see what i'm going to start off with um probably I'm going to go with this angle. This is a Zen Royal and Lang, uh, Lang Nickel. It's an, a quarter inch, six um, mils. I don't know what's on there. Maybe this stuff's coming off of it. But they're a cheaper end brush, but they are uh, pretty good. And so this is what I'm going to do. So I've got my burnt sienna and over here is a little bit of my van dyke brown van dyke brown is almost black but not all the way it's a really nice brown i like it um, it's very very similar to your raw umber hey wendy i think that's still a little bit I want you to be able to see the paint, the uh, drawing. There you go. Oh, I need some paper towels. So I'm thinking this probably won't take too long. So I'm going to probably um, concentrate on the, the darkest darks first. So that would be and a little bit more brown to that mix. I want it fairly dark. Okay, so the darkest areas are going to be between his feet. And I'm going to try and leave some of this pattern so I know where I am. So I'm not going to go straight over top. You could do the whole thing in brown and then use a white transfer paper and put your tracing on top. Um, I think I'm just going to kind of paint around some of these feather ends just so I know I don't want to cover them up and have to reapply them because that's going to take a while. And I watch you uh, getting bored. <laughs> this is my world, though. And since I started this challenge with Lena, um, I have my actually my table upstairs in my dining room set up with an easel. And uh, when I get a chance, I just go and paint. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit of this over here, just around the bottom of his feet, because that would be uh, shaded more than anything else. Like that. And right in here, where his wing is kind of splayed out, he's just a little guy. I think he's a baby. He's all excited about Christmas. 
<laughs> you could have him sit, um, sitting on presents too. That would be cute. And then a little bit in here. And I know I'm going over this with a bunch of different layers so I'm not too worried about um, covering some of this up. I do have the traceable if I absolutely need to uh, trace over it and I can. You just have to uh, use probably a white um, tracing paper instead of the dark because you wouldn't be able to see the dark. But and then just around the edge of his, the white part of the eye, he puts that in there, maybe a little bit down the center. Don't do the bottom um, by the beak because that's more white. Just around the very edge and I'm kind of swiping it so it gives it a rough edge. Remember we'll go over this a few times so don't get too um, worked up about doing the exact because this is all about layers. So I'm just putting some this other color here, you can mix it up with a little burnt sienna and that mix we did. You can have a little bit of red in there. Like that. And of course we'll be doing many layers so don't worry too much about it. You like working in acrylics? Uh, Kathy, what brush are you using? Uh, this is a quarter inch angled flat. Any um, brand will do. This is just the, I don't know if you can see that. It's a six mil, it's a Zen series, Royal Lang Nickel. Um, there's many of them. There, here's a, these are really good, the Princeton. Uh, velvet touch angled shaders quarter inch so it's a little bit bigger they have different sizing that's the only thing depending on your brand they have different sizing um, I like using an angle because you can use the tip to get into the little tiny areas if you instead of switching up for whatever um That is good. I don't have any special ones. I am hard on my brushes. Ah, yes. Aren't we all, though? <laughs> That's an excuse so we can go out and get some more. <laughs> I swear. And you're always hearing about, you know, a new brush coming out. All right. So, the, um, going to kind of start from the back working our way inwards so he's fairly fuzzy and uh, I think we're going to go back and forth in this lighter color and then this kind of it's almost orangey color and I'm going to use the burnt sienna for that and uh, the creamy color. I'm just going to mix some of that sienna color, the raw sienna, and white, but a lot of white in it. And that'll give me my kind of pale 
I don't know what color you'd call that. It's, it's kind of got a yellowy tinge to it. It's not buff. Buff is um, a little bit different. But you could, in a pinch, use buff. So I'm just going to get some of this sienna. I'm going to put it over here, I think. And then the white. And we'll probably vary the tone of this as we go. Because it doesn't have to be the exact same color all around. It's kind of nice to have your difference. Makes it look a little more realistic. So we got a little bunch of that. And we also need that the sienna color. This is the burnt sienna. I'm going to put a little bit of white with that. Lighten it. A bit more. And you can always add more or less white to it. Need to. I like to have a, a variation of tone and that way I can just pick it up quickly. So that should do. Looks kind of like a sand color. Sorry I'm talkative. That's okay. Be talkative. <laughs> I'm usually not very talkative so it's a good combo. I also brought out this brush. I want to see if I can. This is a Silver Silk 88 Triangle. I don't know if you've ever tried one of these. Um, I'm thinking of the feathers, but it might be the wrong shape. You kind of need a cat tongue or uh, a filbert, something with a rounded et, um, end on it, but we'll see. We might play, see what we can figure out. Um, now for the, around the head, it's kind of, you, they're not definite feathers that you're seeing like this here. More fuzzy. So in order to get that, it's a lot of different layers. So we want a brush that's kind of fuzzy or uh, you could use a grainer brush. I do have a grainer here. Uh, let's see if it's too big or not. Kind of big though. Create. Don't know if I have my other. I have a lot of brushes upstairs. Um, or you could use a kind of a fuzzy brush too. I do have. I do have this one. Let's see if I have. Oh. That might work. No. Or a deer foot. I don't know. We'll see. I don't want, because of the size I'm working with, too, um, gets a little bit. I might work with the grainer, see what I can do with the grainer. And we'll go back and forth with different colors. So uh, let's work with this grainer and see how it works. This is how I typically paint as I try things out. Probably one I need to toss. Oh, I never toss my fuzzy ones. <laughs> never. They're great for grass and all kinds of stuff. Okay, so this is a filbert. You can see the the end is kind of fuzz. It's uneven. It's not as thick on the end as by the ferrule. And that gives you a kind of that sparse look. So I'm going to start back here. And the trick with a a grainer is to have the right amount of water versus paint. 
if you have too much the the little hairs kind of stick together and, and just gives you a blob you don't want that and I like to work um, fairly quickly when I'm using this I don't want uh, to put too much pressure on it either just sweep it out we'll be adding lots of uh, layers here so He is a fuzzy guy. A little fuzzier on the, I don't know if those are supposed to be his ears or what, or horned owl maybe of some sort. Could be. Um, I'm just going to go in because I'm going to put in uh, quite a bit of that other color in there too. Okay, and then a little bit of this burnt sienna. Let's see if it's the right color. And I'm not waiting for it to dry. Because you like, I like the mixing of the two colors sometimes. And uh, should work pretty good with this one. It mixes a little bit. And it'll be a little more on the red side on the inside close to the eye here it's a little bit more red but I did put that brownish color in because I want it dark I don't want to be able to see that canvas through it and then right in here Just have to make sure you got the right amount of water on your brush. This one has a bit more in there. And we'll put the white over top, that lighter color. But we want that fuzziness. pop through that um Yeah, those uh, bars are good. I use those all the time, too. After each uh, stream or painting session, I usually um, wash my brushes really good. So I'm going to go back to that lighter color. And you can just... Go back into that. You want it soft looking, so you're going to be going over top of this a few times for it to give you that look. So it's going to have an ugly stage, like pretty well every um, painting does have an ugly stage. And right in here a little bit. This around the, the chin is kind of just dabs. It's not really, um, it's more like 
marks polka dots because it's his uh, head kind of squishes the feathers down there. So you're not seeing the the long fuzziness of it. Okay, let's add a little bit. That's a good color. A little more white to that mix. And this should be good for the eyes too. I'm going to mix a little bit. A little bit of water on my brush. I'm going to take some of that off. And just around the edge here, I want it a little bit lighter. I'll we'll probably go back in again and put that. Uh, more reddish tone in again. So you can keep doing this until you like it. That's the cool thing about uh, working with acrylics. So if it's not turning out, let it dry and then try again. Just keep, keep working it. At each level of, or not level, uh, each layer helps. Okay, a little more white in there. I'm gonna add a little bit of water on here too. And sometimes you have to wait for it to dry because if you get to a point where your um, acrylic is starting to dry, then it gets a little tacky. And if you try to work it, you're gonna lift the paint instead of putting on the paint. But when you get to that point, then best to just let it be. Let's, let's dry that. Doesn't take long. All right. Now I can go into that, that reddish. No, well, maybe I'll go into this, lighten it even more, just on the ends. It's lighter. And a little bit lighter on the very top of the head.
A little too much there. All right, we'll fix it. All right, and then just a little bit of that. reddish color and just take a little bit off my brush just a little bit right around the very edge not much Just doing little strokes. And I'm bringing it a little bit into that uh, other area. Just so that some of that um, kind of shows the, the red through when we put that lighter color around the eye. All right, now I'm going to put the cream color in. So a lot of this titanium white with a little bit of the, uh, what was it, sienna, raw sienna. Uh, maybe a tad more. Don't want it too white. And there is a little bit of um, right around the eyeball there there's a little bit of a uh, burnt sienna but we'll do a glaze over top of that part that'll be a, a little easier so I'm not going to worry about um, putting that in yet you can just do that easily with a glaze so You know, just going over the very edge a little bit where that burnt sienna is. Just to show that fuzziness around the eye. Now the beak I'll do first before I go over the uh, beak part. because that's going to be dark. A little bit more water on my brush. So I am paying attention to how my the little feathers are going. So they kind of follow the eye all the way around. This is on a little bit of an angle. So that's why this um, one side looks a little smaller. Okay. Okay. So if you have any questions, just put them in caps so I can see them. Uh, 
I'm just going to take my um, angle brush and fill in around the eye here because it's just going to be the, the color. You're not going to see the uh, different um, feather, individual feathers type of thing. Um, and I'm just going to go right around this part here, just around the outer edge of that eyeball with the same color. And then once I get the beak in, I'll worry about the little fuzzies on the overtop. Okay. Uh, now, his right under his beak, a little bit of a shadow here. So we can add a little bit of, it's more of a brown in there. So a little bit of that umber or raw sienna, whatever color you have. I like using the umber. And then we'll just put a little bit of that in there underneath his beak. Doesn't have to be real dark. And then we'll go back over it. I know it looks a little bit funny right now, but it'll all work out. Okay, I think that's the only place I need it. Let's do his beak. His beak is um, more of a gray, dark gray. I got some black here, carbon black. And I'll just add a little bit of white. We'll put the dark darks in first and then we'll I'll just go over top of that a little bit. He's got a little bit of a curve on his beak. We'll just uh, this is starting to fall apart. I have to glue the thing on. <laughs> Cheapy. <laughs> okay, let that dry. I'll get a smaller brush. A little more detail. I like these Chinese brushes. These are really cheap. I think you can get a pack for five bucks or something like that. But I like them because they have a, such a nice point on them. And they're great for uh, watercolor or acrylics, even um, oil. Okay, we'll let that dry. I guess I actually I could put the white in now while it's wet, then I can. Uh, Because the uh, it's kind of goes light on the top here, and then there's a little uh, gradation of color in there. Maybe a little bit more like that. And then just a little bit more shine right on the, more or less on the top part here. A bit of shine there. It's a little lighter. OK. 
Okay. And my grainer back out with a little bit more of that raw sienna with white. Just under here, under his chin, it's that color too. You can kind of flick it into that color we just painted. And uh, it should go into that color a little bit. Down the, I'm gonna need a little bit more thicker. Right in here, a little bit lighter. There. Just bring it down a little bit into that neck area. That looks pretty good. And then he has kind of those feathers that are squashed on his neck. And I'm going to put a little bit more of this whiter in certain areas, just around the very edge to give that A little bit of dimension to the fur or feathers. It is a little lighter right around here. And right in here, along the, the eye, just bring it out. Same with this one here, there's a little bit of a lighter area, just on the edge of it, it's a little whiter. All right, well, it looks like it's dry. Okay, so the, over his beak, more noticeable those long feathers that kind of cover the beak a little bit. So they kind of come from the corner of the eye and they're almost white. A little bit more water on my brush. See that and kind of like sweeps down. Like that. And it curls a little bit as it comes around there. It is pretty white there. Okay, 
<laughs> He's cute. A little bit wider in here. Just along the edge here. It's pretty white. I might have to wait you know, for that to dry up a little bit right there. All right. Yeah, he's cute. All right. Oh, my feet are falling asleep. I'm going to have to stand up for a minute. All right. So now let's see how are we going to handle this? Um, see how the dark area in there? We want to put that in and then we'll put lighter feathers on top. So the feathers are starting to get a little bit um, more formed. Now when you're doing feathers though, you can't start on the top because they're overlaying each other. So the best thing to do is to start from the bottom and work your way up. So there's different ways we can go about doing this. We can use the, see the background shading areas there. We could use that um, by loading our brush on one side with that color. Or we could paint our background and then paint just with what um, that lighter color and leave areas. There's different ways to do this, so um, thinking about how I will go about. You can always see the darker area here. That all of that can be put in with a glaze over top after we're finished with the feathers. I'm thinking I'm going to put that sienna color in. I think it would be probably <clears throat> an easier way of going about doing it. So let's try it. <laughs> the way I work. I just try things. If it doesn't work. Okay, I learned something. Now, if we're going to do it that way, though, we want a brush for the feathers, probably with um, a filbert, meaning a curved or a cat tongue, if you have a small cat tongue, which I don't think I do, believe it or not. Um, but I do want to put uh just the background in that sienna color or not sienna um burnt up uh, sienna now you could put a really light layer on and then i could probably see my pattern as i go let's try that so all you can do is try things. They don't work out. You learn something. Yeah, that's that's a good way of doing it, I think. And then even in here, I'm not going to go to the very end of the feathers, but over there. So a very uh, watered down 
consistency. I got white in there. I don't want white. Let's see. Go over here. And then this side. A little bit of water in my brush. So underneath the, the little uh, neck there is pretty dark, actually. Now, some people would probably do each individual um, feather looking at the shadows and all that, but You could do it that way. Everybody's paints differently. It's whatever you feel comfortable. Um, so I like to try things, see if they work. And I know that'll be dark. So he's going to look funny for a while. <laughs> now, see if I can find one. I don't think I do, but let's see. That one. Uh, I want one that's not too big. Oh, I could try this. That might work. For some of them. That is a 1 8 Artist Loft Dagger Striper. We'll see if that works. So I want this to be dry because I don't want too much mixing, but the color we're going to use is similar to the colors we already got here. So we had kind of that sienna color mixed with the white. And there are areas that are going to be a little bit, um, maybe a bit of this in there to warm it up a bit. There are going to be areas that are a little more darker. Um, you can always change up your shading by adding a little of another color to it to darken it. Now we're going to start on the bottom though. Remember we're, we're doing this from the bottom up. Now I do know that I'm going to put right in here where all this dark area is. I'm not going to worry about loading my brush for each individual um, feather. I'm going to put a glaze on there after they're dry and that'll save me a whole bunch of time. <laughs> so let's see what, let's see if this works. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, this um, so we're working our way up because these feathers are overlapping each other. So we don't want to cover them completely. Now you can change the color up slightly by adding a little bit more of the burnt sand in there if you want. Or a little more white just to change it up. Because they'll be they'll be different. 
I'm paying attention to my um, feathers, the way they were laying over top of each other. I'm going to put a little more white. White in there. And start to get a little bit lighter right in here. And not trying not to put too much on it all. I want to leave some of that background. We'll see. Okay, let's try this one here. These are shorter. I'm going to change up some of the colors here. You can always go back in too and redo stuff. You know, you're not stuck with this. If you don't like it, go over it after it's dry. It's fun just playing. That's what I like. Let's try dipping our just the end of our brush. It'll give you another effect too. Let's see. Just have to play with your brushes. No, I like that. I think that's cool. A little bit. A lighter color there, I think. I want some difference in uh, some of these. And we could always go in with a little bit of a, of a white or the shadow color and redo some of them. I'm just playing. Let's see. A little bit there. A bit smaller under the chin. This is just experimenting on how to use your brushes and Tricks of, of uh, brushwork, I guess. So there's many, many ways of going about doing a feather. I just did what I said I shouldn't do. And that was start from the bottom and work your way up. Let's 
All right. Looks a little fuzzy. Let's just do the inside of his. Uh... His wings here. A little bit more of the orangey color. So they're a little bit of a different shape. You're seeing them on a side profile, so they're not as wide. in there. fun is just to experiment and play with your your brushes there's so many different ways of using them and the only way you can do find out how what that is is to play with them not worry about making a mistake a little bit more White. Almost done that one. A little bit more of this color in there. white on the edge here Hey, <laughs> okay, the pearl of baby penguin they had to help patch the egg and had hand feed her. She's so cute. Oh, really? <laughs> they are cute penguins. All right, I'm going to make some a little bit. Lighter areas right in here. Seems to be kind of the, I don't know, lightest area of the chest area. Kind of sweeps down. Some of these are real long. A 
I'm almost losing my colors behind it though. Well, well, well. figure it out. Just play till you get it right. The way I do it, anyways. Let's see. Maybe a little bit of this, a little bit of that. <laughs> He's looking cute. I like him. Then we could, let's try, let's try this. A little dab of brown on the end of my brush. See what happens. Nope, not enough. Well, let's try that and see where we stand. I want this really good and dry. All right. So Well, I'm going to go to the eyes next and we'll finish this in a bit. Let's let that cool down a little bit. So the eyes will be the black, not quite black, black, but a bit of white with that. Almost black, but Around the edge, a little water. Now you could use a, a script liner if you want. Or Posca. You have the right colors. That's the only thing about Poscas. You don't they're all right if it's blacks, you know, you're using just your typical colors, but I don't use a whole lot of the colored in in um, this type of painting more or less um, when I'm doing like doodle abstracts or something like that, then I'll use it. I think I'm going to use my script liner or my uh, 
other, this one here. It's got a nice point, a little more controllable, easier. I like the hairs they use on these two. They're just the right spring to them. It gives you a lot of control. I like that. This is fairly dark in there. Like that. So, Colleen, have you got all your shopping done and everything for Christmas then? You must have had to plan for all of that, knowing that you will be off your feet for a while. And then I'll do this one. Uh, Christmas is all done and wrapped. Wow, good for you. Well, that's good. You don't have to worry about all of that stuff. Okay, I think that is pretty good. I'm going to put a little bit on in here. Just the tip of his beak is a little bit darker. And right in there. Definitely happy to have that off my mind, off your plate. Yeah, my bat. Um, I guess we could paint the rock or log or whatever it is he's sitting in. So I'm just going to mix a bunch of different colors here, black and all the colors I have on my palette here. I'm not going to get anything new. But, and just paint around the little toes. And I'm just painting the um, sides of this board canvas, too. I like to have the sides finished. It's going to be a little darker in the between the toes. So we'll just make that a little bit darker. So it would be a little darker in between his legs too, a little bit. 
and make it a little more on the black side so it's distinguishable between the body and the bird of the log. Um, let's see. Um, he has toenails too to put in. Get rid of that canvas. It's the only thing about canvas is you got a lot of texture. Even though you put coats of gesso on before, it's still that's the only thing that bugs me about canvas is the texture. I know there are some um, artists that use uh, boards instead of canvas. which I can see because you get more detail. You're able to do more detail and that's what I like, detail. <laughs> so, I don't know, might switch to that maybe. Just so that I can get more detail. Uh, what is that brush? It looks cool. This is just a very cheap, um, the, the Chinese brushes, you get them in packs of like six or something in different um, widths. I think I got a couple here. Yeah, here's one. Here's another one. I think this one came with different, uh, see? I think I got these, um, I think there was, uh, had to be probably, I know I have one upstairs, so one, two, three, four, probably nine in a pack, and I think I got them for like five bucks. You like boards better than canvas? A lot of, uh, go on, um, there isn't even a name on them. If you go on uh, Amazon, um, calligraphy brushes, I think they call them. Um, Chinese calligraphy brushes. They're cheap. Um, so if you're going to, some of them probably won't last that long. But these seem to have been working really well. They haven't lost any hairs. I really like them. Uh, let's see. His little feet are going to be kind of a yellow with uh, sienna. I think a little, little more on the yellow side. So just some of that Camium yellow medium with the sienna and a, a little bit of white. That should do it. And that's going to be my um, color for the little toes. So I'm going to put that on all of them and then I'll shade them. I hope I didn't blow your ears out. I hope I'm not getting my son's cold. <laughs> Haven't had a cold in years, so I'm hoping I don't break my record.
should do. And this is a good color for also for um, the eyes. So it's kind of a goldy color. So let's put that in. And it kind of goes into a little bit of a darker gold color as you get up higher into the eye. Let's see. I'll have to... Uh, So put that in first before you put the pupil in. Then you can um, kind of manage your pupil size. You don't have to worry about putting that color in. All right. Well, that looks pretty good. And then just black for now. Um, I'm going to put black on his nails. And he'll have a white area for highlight. Just a little bit of this. Okay, and then that black in the center for his pupil, and then you can put the highlight in after you have the pupil in. Don't try painting around a highlight. So it doesn't look right. Oop. I'll touch it up a bit, but that's okay. Holding my breath. And there's actually uh, a bit of a highlight on his eye. Um, the lid of his eye. There. All right, now and that highlight is kind of a, not white, white, but it's a bit of gray, I guess. So I'm just gonna make a little bit of a gray here. And kind of, You leave a little line around the yellow. I'd have to go in and touch up, but that's okay. This one, you're only seeing a bit of it 
on one side because of the angle. So uh, too much water on there. It's not going on right. We'll have to fix it a little bit, but not bad. All right, some black touch ups. I think he's cute. I'm going to make this a little bit, a little bit wider right here. Like that. And a little bit of Okay, and a little bit of a touch up in here. And I think I'm going to get, let's see, a, a yellow Posca paint marker. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Let's see if this works or not. Just want a little bit of a lighter color there. I think that's good. This one's a little bit orangier, I think, or is that the same? A little orangier.
We'll see. If it works. Yeah. Just to help with the eyeball. And then I can, I don't think I have a black one, or do I? Uh, hey, Jasper, we're just playing here. <laughs> Experimenting. Experimenting with kinds of stuff. Uh, let's see if I got a gray. I like some of those I like, but I find they, um, oh, there's one. Is that... Gray. Oh, that's brown. Let's see if it's gray one. Oh, this one's different. Oh, no, it's not. All right. That. Got a shaky hand. It's not helping. <laughs> Actually, you don't see that side of the eye as much on that side. Because of that angle, so actually, it'll be like more like that. And this one here, like that better. Thank goodness for those. <laughs> it's on a bit of an of a, an angle, so. And then a white. That's my white. Or kind of a yellow. Actually, it's more blue, but. Don't have blue out. Light blue. I can probably smear it. Let's see. I don't think this one even works. It's dry. 
Yeah. That one's done. Uh, here, got some blue. Just dab on the cap. Got some blue over here. Some white. And just like that. I think that's big enough. All right. Now let's get a little bit more fuzziness, so to speak, on my little areas here under the chin, where it's a little bit looks more dot looks dotty almost it's like there's some really dark areas and there's light areas it's, it's the feathers that are all squished between the neck <laughs> but Then dry. Let's do a little bit of. I guess we could use this one. Oh, here's no. We'll use this one. A little bit of um. Can't speak. Glazing on certain areas. Just to darken areas. Uh, so right around in the head here. Be a little bit more reddish. Oh, I got too much on my brush. Just pushing it just along the edge there a little bit. Needs it. Just a little bit of a glazing. That. A little more in there. And then they do have a little bit of um, on this eye mostly. A little bit along the edge here. Could actually use my grainer. Yeah, maybe my grainer. I want an uneven. Where did I put it? Oh, there it is. An uneven um, edge to it. So. 
right there. Just along the very base of that eyelid. goes around a little bit there and then this one starts right about there because you're only seeing a bit of it because of the profile just a smidge Uh, and then I just wiped. You can soften it a little bit. Just with a clean brush. Like that. And Smidgen of black in here. Not much, but there is a little bit. And then just a clean brush. Like that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, I want a little. Let's dry now. Now I can put my oh, that one's. I think you can reverse these or wash them. I can't remember. I gonna. I just need a little dot. Not enough. Just take my end of my brush. Here. And now we can take some. darker areas and I'm just going to put a little bit on the tip of my brush here of this brown Let's see and just underneath here got this mm, a little bit of shadow And you can always go back and put more feathers on if you want. If you find you've got too much shadow, then just go go back over top of it. I'm just going to put a bit of this in here, see what it turns out like. I'm just experimenting. Seeing what I can do. I know there's probably easier ways. Let's try the small one here. Brush. Typically, 
this is how I roll. Experiment and try things out and see it works, see it doesn't work. And if you do it enough times, you get this muscle memory, they say. That just comes automatically. Tells you, oh, I know how to do that. Oops, sorry. <laughs> I'm out of, completely out of picture there. So I'm just playing. Let's see what I can do. This is when I could play for a long time doing stuff like this. If I were by like doing this on my own without being on camera, I'd be spending hours probably. That's what I do. This is how I find out how to do certain things um, or find out new ways of doing things too is by just playing it looks kind of shabby <laughs> all right let's see what the brush did I use that with I think it was this one wasn't it Put a little bit of um, lighter areas in here. Just on certain tips. That will kind of help distinguish some of these feathers too. Uh, no old ones in there, I think. Put some of these in, little darker ones. All right, he's looking a little better. <laughs> kind of funny looking, but a little floofy.
Like I said, you could play and play and play. <laughs> All right, now dry that and then we'll put some shadows underneath here. Right, let's see. It's a little bit on. Uh, let's take some of this Van Dyke brown, I think. Water down. And right from the bottom here. pretty dark right into the uh, chest area in here and I'm gonna even put some in here right in here along his chin and a little bit more in there Up the sides a little bit. Like that. Clean brush off. Before it's dry, you can always take away some if you want. Or a cloth. Just clean up some of that area. Like that. Like that. Okay, and let's put in some shadow on his feet. So along the sides here, it doesn't have to be crazy detail, but just to show that there's shadow there. Shadow and highlight. Not too much water on my brush. Right in there. And kind of shadow you in there, side of his toes, like that. Then a little bit of white on the tops. More or less 
Mm, kind of on his knuckles, I guess. Right there. I guess that's pretty good. I'm going to put a little bit more on his beak down the center. He needs, needs that white. And a little bit on his toe nails. You don't have to, they're right on the very edge, so I'm not going to go crazy. But just a little bit, a little something, something there. <laughs> He's cute. Um, oh, and he's got dots, little dots of white on his forehead. So. I don't know what kind of owl this is, but. I'm just putting these little dots in. Cute. A bit more concentrated on the top part. Okay. Maybe let's put a little bit of fluff down here. I'm a little fuzzier. Just a bit. There. Cute. Um, a little bit of a brighter in certain areas of his, uh, eyelid there it's a little bit on the brighter side so I'm just gonna add a little bit if I can the same it has to be almost white Oops. one here probably gonna have to go in with the black again touch up I get I get too <laughs> detailed I see the littlest things and I have to, oh, I gotta do that. Do you guys like, do you do that too? 
It's crazy. But if I don't do it and I look at it, that's the first thing I'm going to see. So I just do it. Oh, yeah, and the, and the little um, tops of his eyes are going to be a little bit on the shaded side. Actually, that eyeball needs to be a little bit bigger, come to think of it. Uh, it should be showing less yellow on that side, like that. This is the color. And then shadowed on the top part. Let's see. A little bit of umber, I guess. Or not umber. Sienna. Um, burnt sienna right there so how okay it's two hours so see how long it takes me this is how <laughs> lena and i were talking about this yesterday we are doing these every day and we get caught up in doing these um, really involved paintings <laughs> instead of taking an hour you're taking us three four hours some of them because we we're crazy that way <laughs> all right I'm just gonna outline this a little bit more Good. There. I think that's good. Should leave it. All right. I think that's good. What do you guys think? Let's see, I'm picking up. <laughs> You're working on it. <laughs> oh, I can't help myself. All right. I could do a back. Oh, I didn't do my didn't do my wood. I'm just going to put a little bit of streaks in it. Doesn't have to be anything pretty. Just a bit. Like that, even. There. Uh, I think he's cute. I love him. Oh, thanks, Wendy. <laughs> You're the best. I'm glad you like him. He's cute. But uh, that's how I roll. <laughs> now, what I'll, what I have done too is I'll. Um, where did that brush go? I'll, I'll do a painting and then I'll have it sitting and uh, more or less sitting in front of me somewhere and 
then I'll see it and, and I'll catch something I didn't catch before. And I'll get my paints back out. So a lot of these take a long time to do. <laughs> Maybe I should do background on them, though. What do you think? Or just leave it? He's cute. Could I do that's quick? That wouldn't take too long. Hmm. Thing like a watercolor type background or hmm. blue could go blue or or gray. What do you think? I have shading gray. Do that. What other colors I got here? Phthalo blue, cobalt blue. Gray will make the owl pop even more. You think so? I have the blues too. They were blue. I don't know if I want. I kind of like the. Um... Well, let's give her a try. You don't have to necessarily have to uh, go too close to the owl itself. We could have it kind of um, in a bit of a glow. Blue-gray would also make up off the page. Blue-gray, yeah. This is, this is shading gray. I like using this stuff. Well, we could put, well, we'll see. I'm just going to use this uh, Terry Harrison Golden Wizard and just a light because so I've got to be careful. Don't want to have to repaint him. So, that's what we'll do. We'll just do this. And you see what I have to do, how I work around things. Okay. Mm. Brush go. Light, 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 light coat. I'll just work around. 
be dark in there anyways, so. It's very, very pale. A little darker around the edges. That's cute. Looks 3D now, I think. sides. it will dry. Yeah, he looks cute. You could always put another coat on um, once that dries. If you want it darker, but I think I like the kind of the in-between. Just get the sides here. See if I got that. Okay. I think he turned out cute. All right. 
I think he's done. <laughs> I like him. He's adorable. I think he looks cute. So that is number 48, I think. I guess I should do it in black. There we go. So there's number 43 of my painting a day. <laughs> if you want to um, see all of them, they're on my Instagram. Or you can also uh, look on my shorts on my channel. And they're all uh, posted there. They're only like two seconds each one. <laughs> so uh, if you're interested in doing this one, there's um, a traceable for anyone that would like to try it. And uh, you can find those on my membership here on YouTube or in Patreon. And there's links below in the description. All right, so I'll let you guys go. And you have a fantastic evening and a great weekend. And we'll see you on Tuesday. All right, have a great one, everyone. Bye for now.